Okay. This would be so interesting um, to hear Andrew Tate's take on this. A recent survey, and I want to bring this quote up on the screen, measured happiness among different demographics of people. This was not just women. We talked about a very similar survey last week about which type of women were happiest. Single women, married women, married women who are mothers, mothers who are not married. And it found, that survey found that married mothers are by far the happiest. Well, this survey includes men and doesn't take into account uh, parenthood and found, if we could bring element number six up onto the screen, please, found that being married is the most important differentiator in happiness with a 30% point happy unhappy gap over the unmarried. So you are 30% happier if you are married, according to this survey, than if you are unmarried. So here's my point. If Andrew Tate, who thinks of himself as the role model for young men, teaching them how to be successful and happy, if Andrew Tate actually wanted young men to be happy, he would tell them to get married and to stay married. And yet, Andrew Tate recommends no such thing, even though the scientific evidence shows you are 30% happier if you are married than unmarried. If Andrew Tate wanted men to be happy, he would tell them to get married and stay married, and yet crickets from Andrew Tate. All right, Lizzo. We haven't talked about Lizzo in a while. Every time we talk about Lizzo, I get a whole batch of emails, some from people saying this is great that you're talking about how Lizzo's so-called body positivity narrative, which is basically just her trying to tell us that being morbidly obese is healthy when we know objectively it's not. And my point in talking about this always is not to be rude to Lizzo. Like she has value and dignity regardless of whether she's morbidly obese or not. But I refuse to let the left destroy objective reality. This is this is their next front. First, they told us that men could be women if they want to. Now they're telling us that morbidly obese people are perfectly healthy, that it doesn't come with a risk of diabetes and heart disease and early death, even though scientifically it does. I refuse to let them um, re-engineer society, redefine words, and destroy objective truth. But every time that I talk about this, half of the people are like, yes, thank you. And then other people are like, please don't bully Lizzo. Oh, I'm not the one bullying here. Wait till you hear this. I'm not the bully. Lizzo is. Lizzo has been accused of both sexual harassment and body shaming. And when I say body shaming, her former employees who are alleging that Lizzo created a hostile work environment I want to read this from the Associated Press. This is exactly what she's been accused of. It, they write, Lizzo has been sued by three former dancers who accused the Grammy winner of sexual harassment and alleged the singer and her production company created a hostile work environment. The civil lawsuit filed Tuesday in Los Angeles County Superior Court claims Lizzo pressured the dancers to engage with nude performers at a club in Amsterdam and shamed one of them for her weight gain before firing her. Now, the Associated Press is being pretty delicate when they say Lizzo pressured her dancers to engage with nude performers at a club in Amsterdam. If you want the details of what Lizzo pressured her employees to do, please, I invite you to look it up. You will be shocked. You will be horrified. And you will want to detox your mind from even thinking about the disgusting, perverted sex act that Lizzo was pressuring her employees to do. But then, of course, Lizzo bullied one of her employees for gaining weight and then fired her. I'm going to leave this story with no comments. I'm going to leave this story with no comment. I've been called a bully even by conservatives for calling Lizzo out. I think we can all see the writing on the wall here. Or, as you might say, the elephant in the room. We have time for one more random thing from the internet. And this is actually, I can't wait to hear your guys' opinion on this. I want you to tell me what you think. In a zoo in China, there's an exhibit with bears in it. This sounds pretty normal, pretty standard for zoos to have bears. But there's one bear in this zoo that oftentimes stands on her hind legs and waves to patrons of the zoo. And this bear does not look like a normal bear. This bear is really skinny. This bear waves in a way that has caused people all around the world who have seen this video to wonder, is this a real bear or is this a human? in a bear suit. Here's the video, decide for yourself. Look at this bear. Does that look like a bear to you? Or does that look like a human wearing a bear suit? I've never seen a skinny bear like that. Usually bears are fat. And waving that way, that's pretty good dexterity for a bear. Moving the head like there might be some kind of eye holes right around the neck like a bear costume. I'm gonna choose the conspiracy. I'm gonna choose 
that's a person. That's definitely a person there in that in that bear suit. Let me know what you think. Go to lizwheeler.com, drop your comment, tell me what you think. Okay, so for a couple of weeks now, you guys have been asking me uh, my opinion on Sound of Freedom, the new movie that's out that's been a resounding success. It's made over $150 million at the box office. That was just after the first week release. Insane. I mean, we're talking more than Mission Impossible. Like, out of nowhere, Dark Horse movie. You've been asking me my opinion on this, and I've been waiting to talk about this because I wanted to bring on the producer of the film so that I could ask him the questions that we all have about this movie. So he's with me now. This is Eduardo Verastegui. Thank you, Eduardo, for being on the show. I appreciate it. No, thank you so much for this interview. Okay, so before we even get into the topic of the film, which we all know is a very heavy topic, it's about child trafficking or child sex trafficking, I gotta ask you about the business aspect of this. This was not done, this movie was not produced and distributed in a traditional way through the big Hollywood production companies, and yet it's beating, and it's continuing to beat like big box movies. How'd you guys do this? Well, you know, when I... When Alejandro Monteverde, the director of this film, and I met Tim Ballard eight years ago in Los Angeles, California, and when we heard for the first time, you know, what child trafficking really is, when they told us in details, when they explained to us in details what these children are going through around the world, you know, children that are four, five, six, seven years old being raped for 10 to 15 times a day for many years, and then after, you know, they're not fresh anymore because that's the vocabulary that they use, you know? They're not fresh meat anymore. So they go to the second business, which is, you know, uh, organs traffic. They open them and sell their organs. When you hear things like this, I mean, you don't sleep again. You don't sleep well again. Uh, life is not the same again. Uh, and then you start asking yourself, what am I going to do with this information? I didn't know about child trafficking in details like now I know. So I cannot look the other way around. Um, what am I going to do? Well, Alejandro and I were filmmakers. We have a weapon of mass instruction and inspiration. Movies, movies can move people. Movies can, um, they can create a movement, movie to movement. So with that, let's, you know, we have an amazing story. We have an amazing true American hero. I have an amazing director and writer, Alejandro Monteverde. He's one of the best directors, in my opinion, that the world hasn't discovered yet. Um, now it's different, but back in the days, right? <clears throat> so uh, let's make a movie. And I thought it was going to be something very simple. And I thought, you know, if I have a great story, great true American hero, great director, I'm going to start raising the funds. I'm going to bring the best, you know, the best musicians, the best actors, the best everything to, you know, so we can work in this project. And I thought Hollywood was going to be fighting for this film. I thought all the big studios um, were going to be fighting for this film. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.